Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' this D. Boss reacts to this video by Curious Archive. This is hilariously inaccurate medieval art of animals. I skimmed through it, and it seems like it's gonna be a pretty funny video. Uh, people, people couldn't drop a shit back in the day, apparently. Uh, let, let's see <laughs> their uh, depictions of these animals. Let's watch. What the hell is that? I know that ain't no fucking one. The medieval art of animals often Fuck looked him. a little different from the real world species. <laughs> Sir! And this mismatch was compounded with any animal the artist had clearly never seen before. European texts from this period are full of hilarious attempts to depict horse. far off species. So let's take a look at some of the most inaccurate. Bearing in mind, it would be difficult to know what, say, an elephant would look like if you'd never seen one before. Then of God and speaking of elephant? elephants, they're a good place to start when it comes okay. to inaccurate depictions. Okay. Evil artists seem to struggle with the concept what? of the trunk especially, often rendering it in bizarre ways. Many illustrations also depict elephants supporting entire stone castles on their backs, spurring from myths elephants were mighty enough to carry around entire buildings. This is, of course, incorrect. Another large African animal medieval artist struggled to portray accurately as the hippopotamus, possibly to an even greater extent than the elephant. What, what, where them fins come from, my brother? And and that that tail curling up like that. And. Most illustrations of hippos from the era are way off, with an assortment of aquatic traits like tails and dorsal yeah, fins I'm actual confused. hippos don't possess. Other depictions almost make hippos look like strange horses, perhaps due to misunderstanding surrounding the animal's name, which means river horse. Not I had no extra shit. Up next that ain't we have the giraffe, an animal medieval artist portrayed oh. with less frequency than the hippo or elephant. Compared to the hippo, at the very least, some pieces of art actually get the giraffe's general appearance mostly right, emphasizing the long neck. Well, most of the time. Moving on to African predators, we have the hyena, an animal with rather inconsistent interpretations across different paintings. In some illustrations, the hyena features horns and almost resembles. <laughs> Whenever I speak of hyenas, it's always negative, and this has to do with, um, I think, the Lion King, you know, as a child, maybe that traumatized me because I didn't fuck with them because they were shady as fuck on the Lion King. And uh, more recently, as an adult, when I saw um, Life of Pi, that fucking hyena on Life of Pi, trifling as well. So that that's where the animosity is coming from. <laughs> Resembles a carnivorous cow, while others and are more heard, dog-like. One curious trend is that in many images, hyenas appear to be consuming the dead. This is because of a common myth that the animals dug up cemeteries to eat human remains. See, you always hear negative stuff about them. We're moving to a different part Why of the world. Such a bad Another more predator which gets the short end of the stick in medieval art is the tiger. Far from the massive predatory felines oh, of the real world, medieval tigers tiger were like small dog-like creatures lacking the animal's trademark stripes. Strangely enough, in many illustrations, the tiger is drawn looking in a mirror. This stems from a legend that a hunter could steal a tiger's cubs if they distracted the mother with her reflection, as the mother would mistake it for her cub. A pretty grim legend, and one that would more than likely result in immediate yeah. death if tried on a real tiger. Absolutely. Moving on to the world of birds, the ostrich is a species medieval artists seem to find that particularly challenging. Most images of ostriches lack almost all of the animal's defining features, including their long neck and flightless nature. Indeed, many depictions of the ostrich just look like standard birds. Like Another unusual trend is the ostrich of medieval art is often shown abandoning its egg to roast in the sun. Although real ostriches do leave their eggs exposed in ground nests, this isn't because they're neglectful parents. Their they're eggs do just nest, find right? out in the open. Furthermore, another odd trend is illustrating the birds eating an iron horseshoe. This comes from a myth that ostriches could digest anything, even metal. Once again, this is distinctly false. Where do people get another this shit? Another looking bird missing many of its most notable features is the pelican, which in I'll talk about that. Evil art is a short beaked organism lacking its trademark oh, throat pouch. A highly unusual theme is most depictions show pelican families eating each other. The bizarre cannibalism comes from a legend that pelican babies try to eat their parents when fully grown, prompting the parents to eat them in return. This is an obviously inaccurate notion as another one that's inaccurate. Just a few generations using such a behavioral model. 
Diving into the ocean, the next animal we're touching on is the whale, an aquatic leviathan which rarely looks anything like the real species in medieval art. In most depictions, the animal looks less like what we know of as a whale and more like a giant fish, to the point where some versions are even covered in fish-like scales. Some whales in medieval illustrations go a step further away from the real animal and seem to have legs. While we're dealing with the ocean, the dolphin is another interestingly, albeit incorrectly, portrayed so marine mammal when it comes to marine art. Like the whale, the dolphin oh usually God. just resembles a giant, slightly goofy-looking fish. One aquatic organism which deviates even further from its real-life counterpart, however, is the sea turtle, which for some reason is often portrayed as bipedal with a massive tail. Sea turtles in medieval paintings also usually feature curiously shaped shells and segmented toes. One depiction of a sea turtle even seems to look more like a hedgehog, with the artist likely hearing the animal was armored and incorrectly assuming the two species were equivalent. Going further inland, one semi-aquatic predator medieval artists took serious liberties with is the crocodile, with many images of the animal looking borderline unrecognizable. To be fair, some illustrations at least look okay. more or less like Ugly. a reptile, while others really deviate from crocodilian features, displaying hair, paws, bushy tails, and short, dog-like snouts. Then again, some of the drawings of crocodiles which don't include fur don't look all that better. Nearing the end of our list and truly veering into bizarre territory, we have the scorpion, another animal given fur and mammalian features without any clear explanation. There's something about giving a scorpion a non-arachnid face which makes it look so fundamentally absurd. At least some depictions give it more legs than a standard quadruped. Well, some depictions. At the very end of our journey, we have an animal you'd never be able to identify just by looking at medieval portrayals, the chameleon. Although in real life the animal is a lizard, medieval art is sometimes portrayed it as a horse-like organism, and sometimes more like a cat. In either case, one thing is for sure, it looks nothing like the animal it's based on. The error might come from phonetic similarities between chameleon and leon, or lion, but truthfully, the reason why chameleons are so inaccurate in art from the period is anyone's guess. And that's where our list comes to an end. What, what were they on drugs at the time of, of these um, illustrations? What, were they on drugs when they were trying to draw these animals? Because what? Like, it, it's not even just that the drawings are bad. Y'all add no extra shit, making it look completely different than it actually is. Like, what are you doing? Um, but what was I about to say? Ooh. Oh, we've been wrong many, many, many times throughout history. So don't be so quick to latch on to information that you are fed just because you did a quick fucking google search and they didn't told you some shit you didn't found an article stop trying to hold on to that to the death of you because we are always wrong as humans we don't know what the fuck we talking about we make a whole bunch of guesses and we're constantly putting information out there and spreading it to everybody like it's fact and the shit be wrong nine times out of ten you know right it, it just it just be wrong a lot of times maybe not nine times out of ten but most of the time i feel like it'd it be wrong okay and and that also reminds me of um how cigarettes was like a thing they didn't think that cigarettes were dangerous at all this was widespread like oh i think even doctors the doctors that y'all trust so much were telling niggas to smoke cigarettes that you should i think they were prescribing it to help with like anxiety and shit like that they were telling people that it's safe to smoke go ahead it's fine you'll be fine go go light light up some cigarettes smoke smoke your heart away giving niggas cancer like so don't just believe shit don't blindly believe things that you are told from the government, from Google, looking up shit online, even professionals. People put so much trust and faith into uh, doctors and other professionals. Oh, they have these credentials, but they do this and that. That don't mean shit. Niggas are wrong all the time, all right? <laughs> that I just was reminded of that and, and all these people being wrong about a lot of shit. He just kept saying they were incorrect about this. And it was widely believed this, but this is very incorrect. Like... It just made me think about that. You know, something to think about. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what other videos I'm going to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!